हाय शुभंकर ये शुभंकर आई लैड यू इन अ मिनट लेट्स वेट फॉर अ फ्यू मोर पीपल टू जॉइन हेलो हेलो एवरीवन आई विल जस्ट वेट फॉर अ कपल ऑफ मोर पीपल टू जॉइन एंड देन विल स्टार्ट टू डिस सेशन Yes, hello. Okay, I, I think we can start. So, hello, hello everyone. Good evening, and welcome to uh, another session on Wildlife Weekly with Nikhil. I know it's been a big gap. I haven't been able to do uh, more lives, uh, but today I got chance, and it was a good occasion. Uh, there was a paper published by a team of which I am a part. and uh, we published a paper on new species of scorpions and i thought maybe this is a good uh, topic to discuss because uh, scorpions is not a subject that is discussed uh, say every day or say that frequently even on social media or even in newspapers but uh, uh, nonetheless it is still a very important uh, topic and a very interesting uh, fauna and since uh, two of my very good friends are also uh, primarily working on scorpions i thought why not invite them to today's live so uh, as you all must have read today's topic is uh, the scorpion adventure discussing about the recent publication and uh, the interesting field sessions that uh, these two uh, people had uh, so the two people that are going to join us today are uh, shauri sulakhe and shubhankar deshpande so i'll introduce them after i add them so let me add them shubhankar can't see shubhankar shauri in this room let me add shubhankar first hi 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 shubhankar yeah so i sent a invite to shauri yes shauri has joined so i have sent you yeah. an invite just to wait a minute शौरी सुलाखे इज डिरेक्टर एट इन सर्च आउटडोर्स एंड मेम्बर ऑफ इंस्टिट्यूट ऑफ नैचुरल हिस्ट्री एजुकेशन एंड रिसर्च एन इंस्टिट्यूट वेर ऑल ऑफ अस वर्क टूगेदर एंड दीज टू आर पार्ट ऑफ द स्कॉर्पियन रिसर्च बेसिकली Shubankar is has just graduated and now is pursuing his masters in science hopefully he'll do more research in scorpions but he is also a research student at institute of natural history education and research in her in short which is based in pune uh, shauri and me we go long back uh, i started my wildlife camping with uh, in search outdoors which uh, shauri is director of and from there my wildlife journey started uh shubhankar we know each other for more than i think now 6 7 years and uh, yeah. i know he had a lot of interest in reptiles earlier on but uh, we'll talk how he uh, turned towards scorpions later so once again welcome both of you to today's live session thank you hello thank you and uh, to start with uh, shauri uh, i've been telling everyone that paper was recently published and where we described new species so uh could you tell everyone what that uh, paper uh, described and what was it about just in short uh, if you can tell us what was that paper about so uh this recent paper that just got published last week uh, actually was about description of four new species uh three of them from western ghats uh, of india and one from the deccan plateau all of them are from the peninsular india so the title says that there are four new lithophilic species of uh, scorpions from peninsular india so when we say lithophilic all these are uh, dwelling rock dwelling uh, scorpions so uh, litho means rock so all those scorpions which live in the rock crevices or boulder crevices or chiseled rock uh, spaces uh, these scorpions all these species are from that uh, microhabitat and uh, uh me shubhankar nikhil and a few more uh, 
people for guidance we have been working extensively on scorpions lately in last 4 uh, to 5 years and we have been on the spree of describing a lot of new species so the purpose behind this is that uh, earlier due to limited access to lot of uh, tools which we to use today for understanding taxonomy understanding speciation uh, these all species were considered to be con specific and were considered to have uh, a larger range but today when we look at them very closely uh, morphologically statistically and at especially a molecular level uh, which has changed the ball game entirely when we look at uh, uh, yeah when we look at molecular level then we understand that there are multiple species and then their range is very limited so from conservation point of view i think it is very important to describe there are a lot of people who keep on asking us that fine you describe four new species but what is the use of it so right. yeah. so uh, when you look at uh, you know linear development and when you look at industrialization when you look at uh, changes um, uh, you know changes in landscapes having that uh, you know on multiple fronts then the first uh, risk or the first problem that you uh, see is that before even understanding what dwells in that area or what lives in that area you have a risk of losing them out and uh, this happens this happens with uh, you know many new road development projects coming in farm houses being built uh, western ghats being under a massive threat we all know there are a lot of landslides and all these things consistently happening so understanding uh, taxonomy and understanding species is very very imperative to conservation and uh, it helps in prioritizing what you need to conserve and how you need to conserve so this paper purely dealt with taxonomy we are describing only new species but we have done that uh, on multiple fronts molecular fronts as i told you and uh, as well morphology and uh, photographs we have taken ultraviolet photographs uh, interestingly scorpions glow uh, under uv light okay. and uh, they they reflect uh, fluorescence uv fluorescence uh, and that's why uh, you can see uh, morphology in a very different way under a uv light because a lot of morphological uh, micro details that you see under a uv light you cannot see under a white light so right. we have also uv photographs in point when right. it comes to scorpion i guess uv light yeah. is you have to use yeah yeah so yeah we also use uv light to search scorpions of course because they glow at night and then It's, it's like when the newcomers come with us many times it's like a magic show for them because you see scorpions and then you see them glowing at night so mai marathit sangaycha tar ami mulancha education camps la mulanna ratri jadu dakhavto but but yeah that's a fun part but uh, because of this uh, there is also a new horizon of morphological uh, details that we have reached because of uv light right. and uh, we have also included that in our diagnosis so uh, this is arguably the first paper from india uh, uh, which extensively deals with all available delimitation analysis uh, most uh, comprehensive statistical analysis most in depth diagnosis of species uh, as well as molecular data uh, so uh, unfortunately for so many years scorpions has been a very neglected fauna right so type of papers have been regularly being published in uh, you know other vertebrate taxa like uh, maybe uh, geckos maybe amphibia maybe reptiles but uh, not much work with respect to scorpions has been happening in last years and so our team probably arguably as i said is the only team right now which is working towards integrative taxonomy Uh, when i say integrative taxonomy we are integrating all these things molecular tools morphological tools yeah. statistical tools to understand what species like and uh, the four new species are very very interesting one of them is from harishchandragarh fort so yeah, uh, location yeah. from where yeah. species so one of it is from harishchandragarh fort and uh, we have named uh, we have also started naming all the species in our native uh, sanskrit language or marathi language so okay. the name is scorpiops the genus is scorpiops and the name is vrushchik so in okay. sanskrit we all know vrushchik means scorpion and tiras pan ahe tar this is described from harishchandragarh fort 
and uh, the second species is corpyops neera uh, okay. neera is from uh, varanda ghat on the eastern side of varanda ghat from where actually the neera river originates and flows down so neera nadi cha navane we have uh, uh, described this species wow. uh, third species is scorpyops nakfani so okay. nakfani is a pinnacle which is a very famous trekkers route inside bhima shankar wildlife sanctuary and the species is described from bhima shankar so uh, scorpyops nakfani and the fourth one is scorpyops leonelli which is from deccan plateau it's from a complete semi arid and arid area uh, which is uh, slightly more uh, on the mainland from western ghats from the crest line slightly more on the eastern side of the crest line and uh, it's named uh, as in honor of a very uh, 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 famous uh, scorpiologist who has done remarkable work in scorpiology in the world who is lionel monard so his first name is lionel so uh, patronym uh, as a patronym as a honor for his work we have uh, described it as scorpius lionelli and now when we see at these locations like harish chandragarh bhima shankar neera and lionelli these all are sort of islands so when i call as islands uh, see i uh, when when a common man looks at islands what you can typically imagine is a parcel of land surrounded from all sides by water and if there is a species dwelling on the island uh, say if there is a uh, you know some terrestrial species like a iguana or a lizard which is on that island uh, it's very difficult for the species to disperse uh, to the other islands or to the mainland because there is a barrier of water in between so here so we see, yeah we we see a scenario which is very similar to that because these are lithophilic scorpions and they live in the rock boulders uh, at a particular elevation in a particular way uh, uh, harishandragarh and uh, nakfani and uh, neera these could be islands wherein the animals won't be able to disperse beyond uh, into the spaces uh, so probably grasslands would be water for them or probably uh, thick forest without boulders would be water for them so if you look at it from that point of view these are all island ecosystems and where uh these animals might have been isolated for millions of years and that's the reason why they are formed into different species so we are in the process of developing and generating more data to understand how these creatures have evolved which is very interesting and basically coming to the basic question is what we have what biodiversity we have basic question is that also something we are trying yeah. to answer but on a similar point or rather that point i would like to take forward and ask shubhankar you uh, shauri right now uh, told us about the four distinct mm. locations harish chandragarh which is a high elevation yeah. fort uh, neera nadi uh, where it originates maybe uh, basin of a river then we go right. to uh, yeah. site of leonelli which is a drier mm. area so uh, when we yeah. see at different habitats Uh, going on field and looking for scorpions i know is challenging but uh, if you can yeah, tell yeah. us the interesting stories that you have because i know people know when we go for bird watching we just stand at a place have a binocular or a camera and look at birds which are right. flying around us or say mammals we travel in a vehicle but working on scap- scorpions i know is challenging but if you could tell us uh, some interesting stories of uh, from field basically yeah so the thing is I if think you think try to find for sure out- i think before shubhankar starts the stories i tell you one a couple of challenges in scorpions yes. particularly one thing yeah. that uh, the find has to be at night yeah. that itself yeah. adds from a layman's point of view if you look at it uh, it's a challenge because you have to explore the forest and habitats and scapes at night uh, yeah. secondly uh, many times you have to go in the wet season because in the extreme summers and extreme winters uh, they are slightly less active so okay. the most favorable time is uh, summers or late summers when there are pre monsoon showers that adds to a lot of difficulty because it's slippery the streams are flowing at night many times there are a lot of clouds which come into the valleys and then it's very difficult to find ways out uh, exactly. and i think shubhankar can tell, narrate you stories where some of our yeah. friends have really, uh, really done fraud with us harishandragarh was a species <laughs> which has come out of a fraud yeah. 
like it's really uh, hard to find scorpions from field i think he said no i don't have any field photos i guess this is one of the reason because you're anyways in such a challenging uh, environment and yeah. landscape that you have time it's like, very difficult very even, difficult to carry a camera so, and even sometimes the scorpions are present on a slope of a mountain and even it's difficult to go there right so uh, yeah. i would like to tell you that uh, last year in 2020 so we knew that there was a scorpion ops presented present in uh, kireshwar village so we planned our field visit and we went there and after going there uh, we found few few specimens there okay so our next challenge was like we had to see if the scorpion was present throughout the trek trek route uh, to the top of the fort and we were even interested in seeing whether it was presented in the ganesh caves okay so like we saw the scorpions in the afternoon only and we started walking through the trek route and we uh, we kept walking for like 4 uh, hours 4 hours right and finally we went to the ganesh caves and we saw few individuals there and even there was a dense population of scorpions rushik on harishandragarh itself so while coming there was literally no one on the fort and we were the only four people who were just trekking and finding scorpions at night and it was a bit funny for us and after so, that shubhankar if you back, if you if you remember there are two ways to go to harishandragarh so, yeah 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 so the, the one, one is, is from, the route yeah, yeah and one is from the tolar khinda which is the largest trek route compared to the other one and we sorry, went sorry from winter the, but uh, is he yeah. audible to everyone or is it just me that i'm not able to hear you okay, no no so there seems to be a problem with my phone sorry guys no problem i think it is can you just rejoin can you just yeah. both of you rejoin the call yeah, wait. Wait, wait, wait! I will. Yeah. Sorry, sorry for the interruption, guys. No problem, no problem. Okay. I'll just add them again. I think it's a problem with my phone. This keeps happening for some reason. Am I audible now? Yeah, you are audible now. Okay, okay, cool. Yes, yes, yes. Continue. Yeah, so I was telling that we found many specimens in the Ganesh cave, and it was mm-hmm. like ten uh, thirty or eleven in the night, and we started our journey back. So there were so many of clouds, and we were barely able to see or figure out the trek route from which we came. Okay, and we kept walking there for one and half hour. and still we were unable to yeah uh, unable to figure out the road so after some time uh, our another member uh, who helped us during our field visit akshay marathe uh, got a little bit of range okay to, to to the network and because of that we came to know that the the uh, the trail the trail route was just like 5 minutes from the from that place and we were like uh, walking at the same place for an hour so these are some of the difficulties which are fa- which are faced during the field visits but i would also like to tell that uh, when we went in when we went to gujarat so we were in search of a particular species which is a terrestrial species and we went to a forest campsite there or uh, it was a protected area and yeah it was like 6:30 in the evening and shaurya had asked me ki Shubankar, let's go walking so that it might help us to find scorpions. He said, "I said that like uh, the location is quite far, far from here, and it will take half an hour to reach. Why don't we just go by the car, right?" Yeah. So we just left the campsite, and it was barely a minute, and we were still able to hear the people talking on the campsite. And there is okay. another student of Shauri Adadi Terate. He used to work with us previously, and. he was so chill and he just said that dada there is a leopard walking beside our car and we were oh. just busy talking about the scorpion and we were and we were discussing the probable areas where we could find it so yeah. i just look beside and we just saw the leopard it was a huge female it was a really a big female and 
it just sat in front of us right and it is uncommon to see a leopard sitting in front of you right they are quite so, shy animal yeah and we were watching her for 5 or 6 minutes and after she went uh we were like so we were a bit disturbed because we were supposed to do the field work nearby only and luckily we were able to find scorpions there after it's, it's like most, walking it's for most, uh, it's most unfavorable when you spot a leopard exactly where you had planned to walk and you were going to yeah. trail from there and i had planned to trail from there and then you see a leopard sitting okay. and when the le- so the problem is not spotting the leopard nikhil we might have spotted a le- leopard 1000 times in the forest but the problem is the leopard sitting on say 20 yeah. feet distance and giving a stare at you without right. blink for almost 10 to 15 minutes this is quite rare and that is scary that is scary and then then you have the entire night to do sampling in that area yeah so it was really uh, very difficult to get out of the car and do scorpion oh. sampling over there i started so we music had music because yeah yeah <laughs> we, we practically went back to the camp we took a guard from there and we took the guard along with us to do sampling uh, because yes. uh, uh, yeah require some safety yeah. i mean yeah yeah, yeah. something something related yeah. to harish chandragad i would like to add uh, to what uh, yeah. shubhankar has told told yeah uh, the most interesting part is that uh, neither me i am a trekker nor shubhankar is a trekker okay yeah. i am a wildlife enthusiast and uh, avid naturalist i've been into this field for 25 years but i hate trekking i don't like to trek and i don't like to trek the forts of maharashtra which are very steep very we all steep. know how how steep uh, western ghats especially in the monsoons they are slippery yeah, yeah. like the- and especially in the monsoon and yeah. harishchandragarh is one of the tough forts one of the tough forts and as i rightly told there are two ways one is a easier route from where usually the trekkers go and the other one is a tough route where there is a vertical climb so uh, but it is a shorter route because uh, the road travel is less and the road travel yeah. is more comfortable because the uh, road condition on the other side is very bad so right. one of our uh, te- friends uh, and our team member makran ketkar he is a very avid trekker regular trekker so he told us we will go he was saying we will stay in the uh, uh, caves uh, on the top of the floor fort we'll spend the night and come back next day so i was not keen on that because it's all uh, muddy it is all sticky it's damp and uh, that was not something that i wanted to do so i told him that it's okay we rough out every time we'll come down in one day so he was like cool if you want to do that do it and uh, you know incidentally even my mother uh, used to do a lot of trekking and uh, she spoke to me in the afternoon that oh great you are going to go to harishchandragarh fort great so you are coming down in uh, one day uh, we said yeah we planned that and she said uh, okay which way you are going i said tolar khind so she said okay okay fine see you tomorrow she didn't say a word makran didn't tell us a word and when we actually went and did it we realized that nobody sane would do harishchandragarh from tolarkhind in one day do sampling for couple of hours more than couple of hours and return and in monsoon right. and a situation wherein it was covid it was a covid time so there were uh, there were no locals also on the fort the fort the was fort. actually it was isolated. like uh, yeah. completely isolated not even one person not even one a uh, villager not even a localite not even a, a, a shepherd no one was there in route and we went in the daylight so uh, as we went up it became dark then we started spotting scorpions we got a lot of stuff that we wanted it was and raining scorpions back, it was yeah. raining scorpions and it was raining uh, heavily yeah it was raining also it was raining cats and dogs and when we were climbing down we realized that uh, and makran was saying there is a dike uh, there is there are nice steps to climb <laughs> and when we went there he said i said where are your steps he said these are the steps and, and that was a dike. dike it was a dike so dike is actually a, a you know vertical uh, rock cut sort of uh, structure where there are steps but they are naturally uh, natural steps and in the monsoon it's all slippery there's a lot of moss and water was actually uh, flowing down from those uh, yeah. so called steps 
and then we had to climb up from there and he said ki uh, you wanted to do harishandra gad in one day so at night time you have to climb down from here and me and shubham were like now it's going to be a challenge because and at night he was climb down from that route and he was yeah. keeping on saying that yeah only 10 minutes now 10 minutes ha, now. Only 10 and now. yeah he was saying the same thing for 2 hours and we finally uh, reached the cave like after and, after 2 uh, hours or so one more very interesting problem one more very interesting problem is harishan let me tell yeah. our audience guys uh, yeah. from audience if you have any uh, interesting questions or any questions regarding scorpions or any questions to these two people just put it in the chat and i'll ask them uh, when we finish our uh, discussion so yes shauri you were saying something yeah so the interesting part was because of the covid situation and prolonged covid situation probably uh, there were no locals uh, who had gone on the fort for a few months uh, even the uh-huh. grazers the shepherds they had not gone so right. all those small uh, paths and routes which were usually made by the domestic animals they had also ceased so every and it was uh, it was monsoon so everywhere yeah. it was verdant and undergrowth was very dense and it was all ephemeral undergrowth which had grown densely because of the monsoons right. and five times we missed the road at night and we were not able to find it was a frustrating situation at one point of time we were feeling that we will have to go back to those ganesh caves spend the night over there and come down so if you remember it was a very similar situation at koina you and me were there so situation and all of a sudden clouds used to come into the valley and then there was no chance of spotting the road because the uh, the torch reflects in such a way that you really can't understand where the road is going ahead and uh, finally i could like to question uh, regarding yeah. this uh, uh, the okay. started with uh, scorpions that are found in rocks uh, shubhankar told us uh, in gujarat they were on ground but i know you have also described scorpions which are found on trees so according Tree to two of you so which scorpions yeah, are more challenging will... to find in rocks on ground or on trees i will like to tell you guys about uh, one more incident which took place so uh, we went to shevra hills which is in tamil nadu and isometrus thurstoni is described from shevra hills so shevra hills is the type locality of that species so we were supposed to collect scorpions from there and so uh, we started the the ghat section like in the in the evening and it was raining scorpions there were there were hundreds of scorpions in front of us so shevra hills is like divided into two types of habitats like the upper habitat mm-hmm. is a uh, evergreen type of forest and yeah. uh, and the 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 habitat at the at the bottom of the hill is like a scrubland so uh-huh. we were so we even found few lithophilic scorpions there and yeah. after reaching the evergreen patch we started finding like we found a uh, dozen of isometrus thurstoni in coffee plantations okay in coffee yeah. plantations which was one tree uh, isometrus are tree scorpions yeah. you are talking so about yeah. Yeah. yeah it it was surprising and while coming back there was some problem with our car and it was 3:30 at night and the yeah. nearby village was quite far from that place okay so there was problem to the suspensions suspensions of the car right chauri yeah, yeah yeah the car it broke down it literally broke yeah, down yeah it broke down and we were waiting at the same place for 4 hours and we were uh, trying to find if there was network available on anyone's mobile phone so uh, in morning one of our friend mayuresh uh, mayuresh kulkarni uh, got range and he called the Uh, called a mechanic from nearby and he came and yeah so because of that we were able to continue our journey and yeah. we were supposed to reach a different location king we were supposed to <laughs> are your favorite challenges yeah we were supposed to uh, reach a different location at night and everything was delayed because of this uh, problem and and a But funny funny part if you remember shubhankar a funny part was that in the morning when at 5:30 5 o'clock we our vehicle broke down at quarter to 6 typically 
in uh, rural areas uh, people start coming out the villagers and the local people start coming out so uh, every uh, localite when wa- he was uh, passing from that area he used to come and ask us what has happened and he used to ask us to come able to answer yeah. and, and we were able to uh, we were able to answer in a very uh, you know uh, very shattered language so we no, were we, we were to responding to this seri 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 yeah. seri <laughs> so we we used to tell them what what the problem has happened and then after some time we started laughing that we are doing this for last one hour we are uh, responding to several locals they are asking the same question and we are we are replying the same thing but finally uh, you know we were blessed to have that local person that uh, garage guy who came all the way to that location and helped us out yeah yeah but i uh this whole field work uh, in night and monsoon yeah. nikhil uh, nikhil your question your question what is more difficult the lithophilics or the bark scorpions so i'll answer okay. that so uh, in 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 rock dwelling scorpions uh, there is a, a different difficulty and bark scorpions there is a different di- difficulty okay. yeah. so in rock rock dwelling scorpions i usually have to make my favorite student shubhankar to pehlwan Yeah. So so no he is a pehlwan because he actually cuts the rocks i have wow. to give him a, a pahar what you call in marathi and a hammer a, a geological hammer and with all those equipments we have to cut the rocks we have to break the rocks it's really challenging physically at time to, to right. break the rock right and on bark scorpions the challenge is sometimes the barks are inaccessible because they are up so i have to right. convert shankar into a monkey which i have done right. i remember at several occasions uh, shubhankar might have climbed 20 25 feet at uh, one point of time where is there is a specimen. single specimen wherein to there is a sloping one. yeah wherein the tree is tucked on a hill slope right. but still i have made him climb when it was very very important so the difficulties are different but overall if you see uh, the bark scorpions are easier if they are in accessible range if they don't go but very high up is- so uh, the barks have gaps between them right so bark yeah. scorpions may disappear like in 4 or 5 seconds and it becomes very difficult to again find them and yeah this is one of the difficulties which has to be faced while uh, finding right. any rock uh, tree bark scorpion sorry before we go forward meher agarwal i guess has a question sorry i think you can read it and maybe you can mm-hmm. testing question there is a poem night of the scorpion by nissim x which depicts superstitious outlook for scorpions among indian masses how much apt is it to today huh? superstitious outlook for scorpions i've really not heard about it uh, typically sapancha andhavishwasan baddal kewa andhashraddhan varti apan bolto so scorpions cha andhashraddhan varti pharshi information my kade nahi hai I, i don't have a lot of information with respect to that uh, one thing is there that typically people are scared of scorpions they don't like it uh, in any of the rural areas and the attitude is that yeah they are there around all the time because scorpions have basically uh, engaged with humans since humans are there on this planet because scorpions have been, uh, it's a very old taxa they have been there all around Uh, they have flourished and they have encompassed every possible habitat and micro habitat around the globe they are there in the cities they are there on the hills they are there in the forest they are there in the uh, dry lands scrub lands deserts yeah, everywhere so scorpions are ubiquitous they are common they are everywhere and people have to deal with them and all scorpions they sting and all are venomous so considering all this there is a, a sort of uh, you know people don't like them but at the same time they are extremely important for the ecology uh, they have a very very important place in the ecology they feed on insects they are controlling insect population uh, there are a lot of uh, nocturnal birds which feed on scorpions there are a lot of diurnal birds which feed on scorpions and apart from that if you talk from a very anthropocentric point of view very human point of view then there are a lot of bioactive agents inside the scorpions which are uh proving most important for lot of medical treatments medical and most uh, serious 
most serious medical treatment something like a brain cancer as a, a medicine on brain cancer is being uh, underway in uh, united states in california where in scientists are working on understanding these bioactive agents and using them for creating medicines and even so based on the bioactive agents they are trying to understand the evolution of the venom which which took place back then same and the even venom. so what shubham kar i think a basic question i think i might uh, like answered is uh, yeah. how yes. many percent are actually fatal to humans like we talk about snakes that the so, venom fatal to humans is very uh, less and they are in very few species so when it comes yeah. to scorpion people are scared so because it, we talk about venom and scorpions always yeah. so what is the okay so uh, in india or in maharashtra rather there is a species called hotentota tamulus Uh, okay. which causes the maximum scorpion stings in india it is okay. it is known yeah. Yeah. and even there are few treatments which are given like the prazosin the the medicine which is given on the blood pressure is is given against the uh, against the scorpion sting and even mm-hmm. i would like to also mention one genus androctonus uh, which is known to have a large or a strong venom potency and it is amongst the most one of the most venomous scorpions or a most okay. venomous uh, genus fatal to humans what the effect uh, i don't know exactly if it is fatal no 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 okay. in okay. india none of the scorpions are known to be fatal to humans maybe some of the scorpions as shubhankar mentioned maybe the tamulus if it is uh, stinging a very small baby there might be some adverse effects but uh, overall hot and i am i am a person who is alive and i have been bitten by a hot and catamulus on my pointed finger so uh, as I, yeah so as i said it's not fatal at all in india we don't have yes in uh, california in united states there are some desert scorpions which are uh, fatal which are really fatal but they have a antidote uh, available for it basically they have invested yeah. on an antidote because it is fatal we probably have not invested for so long because it's not fatal but it's really painful like very painful like sometimes people keep on asking why scorpions are important for us i was going you... to ask that many question yeah. because i you have you started your journey in wildlife uh, on there because you are more attracted i know shauri has been doing a lot of wildlife he used to work on butterflies also but then a question to both of you why scorpions if you try thinking in an evolutionary point of view scorpions uh, have a pangean origin okay pangea was a super continent and at that time scorpions have originated so right. it's really important for us to conserve uh, such a, such a animal which has seen a lot of history and even uh, it's important to conserve it like uh as as shauriyada mentioned it it feeds on various insects and if scorpions get extinct the whole uh, whole food chain might get disturbed also right right, right. but just to uh, keep the ecological uh, point of view maybe aside to both of you why why scorpions interest both of you just uh, just a normal question keeping the ecology aside why why scorpion what excites you most about scorpions like the first thing is they are venomous that thought <laughs> fascinates me a lot and even they are nocturnal right and so they are snakes also see if you yeah. if you see if you see uh, scorpions have a lot of uh, features which uh, look very unrealistic you know okay. right. animal glowing ultraviolet rays at night right it is magical it is magical and it's yeah. something very intriguing if you look at the dance that the uh, you know uh, mating dance that uh, scorpions perform the way yeah. the neonates are taken on the back the way the neonates are fed on the back uh, the way natural selection might have worked over years to you know evolve this behavior you know just to tell you in a very uh, short way if there are uh, say hundreds of uh, neonates uh, the female is carrying on the back for 8 to 10 days she keeps on secreting some fluid on which the young ones feed and so they uh, hook on to be on the back there are a few notorious ones who try to slip away and go around the female eats them so the genes for sticking on the back 
are selected naturally exactly into the chain and yeah. these all things like uh, uh, being on the back the way they uh, you know uh, uh, the way they do the dance the way they live the type of feeding habits that they have the uv fluorescence the what, we still don't know what is the uh, evolutionary reason for selection of uv fluorescence we don't know that so there are a, yeah there are a lot of intriguing things and it's all mysterious it's very mysterious it's very as i said a, a ideal word for this is phantasmagoric something which is so fascinating that it feels unreal so right. this this unrealistic uh, touch is there in the biology of scorpions right. and that is very right. attra- very very uh, attracting very so, interesting uh, uh, one last question that uh, comes to my mind and i think uh, talking about numbers we spoke about ecology how interesting how challenging it is to uh, work on scorpions uh, talking about numbers recently uh, our team described four species but what was the condition before you started working on scorpions how many species were there in india or in maharashtra if you can give us a, a number uh, what number of species and what uh, number of species are found now after we describe i think 11 12 species so if you can give us some yeah. numbers regarding scorpions so bankar is working on a checklist right now and we yeah. are creating a checklist for uh, western ghats of uh, india oh. for iucn and it's a very very uh, uh, happy thing that uh, IUCN is taking interest in conservation for scorpions. They have approached us based on the amount of work that we have done in last two years. And uh, Shubankar is right now working for IUCN, creating a list, and we are going to submit it shortly. And based on that, we are going to select a few four to five species on which probably will collect data over a few years, and right. then uh, decide status for them. Yeah. So yeah, Shubankar, let's uh, start. Previously. Like previous years into IOC and I think it's a, it's a great achievement for yeah 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 so uh, previously uh, scorpions were been described based on only morphology right yeah. at that time the amount of descriptions which took place in 1900s like in 1899 in 1900 by a researcher called Pocock uh, okay. he described many species of scorpions from India. after that uh, tikadar and bastavde in 1983 published yeah. a book uh, it is it was named fauna of Brit- uh, for scorpion fauna of india and in that book they even described many new species and they revised many species which were found in india but as of now when we are looking at a molecular level we are coming to know that the species which were based which were described based on morphology on molecular level they are coming out to be a same species okay so the number is somewhat somewhat fluctuating now okay but still so we are now to a molecular i think phylogeny morphology this whole integrative taxonomy thing that we are talking about i think that one thing has become uh, of much more importance when we are working on yes. such a lesser yes. uh, six yeah. opinions or any other thing i think combining all uh, these characters say Uh, which Pocock described, or say Tikadar Bastavde described, and then we are, I think, adding to that data, and then if we find something new, uh, it's getting yeah. described. So I think this is a great uh, contribution, I would say, to science that uh, yes, we are not just uh, putting out our data, but we are using the ancient data and then adding to it, and then if we find something new, uh, we are trying to describe it. I think there is one comment from. Uh, Or uh, now, if I'm not wrong, you need to work and aspire to start and 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 to uh so in we went in our we went to aurangabad right and we were again we were trying to find one terrestrial scorpion and we were just wandering around and few locals came and they started asking so first they thought that we are doing something else we are trying to steal something or <laughs> we are thieves so but after telling them that we are uh, looking for a few scorpions 
so they started taking names in their local language like they started mm-hmm. saying ha halal win to ha ithe milto wagere and they were quite fascinated because of it because by seeing exactly what we were doing right and right. yeah based on the question that is being asked overall uh, about tarantulas if you see yes people are scared of all these creepies and crawlies they are scared of all arachnids but people don't day to day on a day to day basis the uh, rural people don't interact with any of these uh, animals apart from scorpions because scorpions and snakes something which, which enters the houses tarantulas right. don't enter the house easily they are in the earth cuttings or they are in the wild spaces but they are usually not found inside the houses but yes spiders are and people are scared of it but at the same time these local people have utmost knowledge of natural history i'll tell you and where what is found i'll tell you a very simple incidents 15 days back i had gone to uh, spiti valley himalayas which is in himachal pradesh almost uh, closer to china border and i was staying in a village which is at an elevation of around 15000 feet above main sea level and there is a scorpion named as scorpio of spitiensis which is found over there and at night uh, with a qui torch me and makran as usual we were uh, you know going through the village and we were trying to find the scorpion and we were not a- we were able to see but they were all hiding inside the rock boulders wherein we will not able to remove them at night so incidentally on that day there was a village meeting which happened and late night people returned so on the way back we found uh, a person who uh, stopped and uh, was interested in what we are doing and he asked us what are you doing and we said we are finding so and so scorpion and then he said where are you staying we gave him a local reference and he said cool just go straight he said uh, take the upper road wherever the road will turn to your left you will find a scorpion on the road okay don't look into earth cuttings rock boulders anywhere you just go there you f- look around you will find scorpions and i was like i said i i i uh, discussed with makran that this is a bit surprising because uh, on the path how, why would you see a scorpion which is lithophily and we practically went there and pinpointed at that location we saw scorpions around we got collection and we went and we slept Right. but that was really uh, interesting that locals have pinpointed information sometimes they give you very vital information so we always me shubhankar all of us we tend to uh, wherever we go on field we discuss with locals we ask them questions yeah. uh, not only related to scorpions but i'm sure if you remember nikhil for amphibia also we used to do this sthanik lokanna vichar ki there are there is a lot of information that you get because they live there 12 months they know more yeah. natural history than sometimes i know yeah right. uh shubhankar i think you can answer this question from uh, isha uh, if you ever get stung uh, it's not there she has a message if you okay. get stung okay. in one field what is the first thing you should do like in case of snake okay. is there a protocol sort of? so Chill. it's very important for everyone to stay calm for a peop- for a person who is, who is get stung Chill. by a scorpion chill, Chill. <laughs> like and uh like, like, or is there absolutely no reaction after the sting of a scorpion sorry of, can you please pardon uh you're saying stage chill but is it because uh, not many of the species are fated or they their venom doesn't show any reaction at all to human body no 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 the it thing shows, is all of them show reaction yeah yeah so the thing is uh because of getting pan- because of panicking your heart rate starts increasing and the blood flow also starts increasing and the amount of venom which is already injected in your body also uh travels in a high speed in your body so it's right. very important for a person to stay calm and to reach the nearby hospital or uh, in a government hospital in a short time Okay, but is there so is there a do we have any anti venom for scorpions in India? Is there anything such produced? As as far as I know, that prazosin is given most of the times, and even but it's not an it's not anti dote, Shubankar. It's still not an anti dote. It's a supplementary yeah, treatment. That is being given. I have yeah. So one of my friends was even telling me that potassium permanganate is also applied on the scorpion sting. And these are all supplementary. Be... Yeah, these are all supplementary uh, uh, ways to lessen your pain or lessen your uh, yeah. uh, problem. But 
there is no antidote as such so right, staying sir. cool is most important all scorpions uh, stings are going to be extremely painful the amount of extremity will marginally vary but none of the scorpion stings are going to be pleasant none of them right. when i was bitten by the hotentota tamilus i remember i was bitten in tamini and when i came back from tamini till i came to pune uh, the pain was excruciating it was killing and i was because i was uh, be- i was you know uh, you know bearing all the pain i was sweating like a pig i almost had my entire t-shirt drenched with sweat and wow. the pain actually reduced after 8 long hours so till midnight 12 30 i was bitten in the afternoon at around 4 till midnight 12 12 30 it was paining and i had called my friend who is a doctor who runs a hospital he is a md medicine i spoke to him he said there is nothing one can do but nothing will happen you just chill keep calm and it will reduce eventually so it did yeah it did but it took very long and it's like someone is you know piercing a needle into your finger up till the bone it's that excruciating the pain is that bad interestingly if you see the scorpion in suppose if you see a scorpion in pune and if you compare a scorpion from kokan because of the geographical distance there is also a genetic distance between both of the individual which yeah. leads to which leads to a uh, different chemical components in their venom right okay venom composition so also. you can't just give a antidote from uh, from pune uh, if a scorpion has stung in kokan right yeah so it's so quite think... a complicated thing so as as shubhankar as shubhankar right now said there is one fatal scorpion in united states i i don't remember the name right now but there is an antidote treatment only available for that one scorpion and it's a desert scorpion and maximum bites happen with respect to that so they have an antidote only designed for that one particular treatment uh, like like uh, in snakes also if we see we have antidotes only for the common big fours apart from that we don't have an antidote yeah we have a polyvalent yeah antidote which so, is given right to the uh, local perspective again what we were discussing before uh, this question came along uh, one point i think uh, i would like uh, both of you to answer and this is a very interesting uh, incidents that happened when uh, you earlier mentioned that uh, you are naming uh, these scorpions with local names and uh, taking uh, this local names and uh, relating uh, these names with the local people over there i think yeah. has a huge advantage in conservation because then local people can relate those species to their area their surroundings and then they can identify uh, this species and maybe say help in conservation later so i think one of yeah. the species that you named particularly uh, in one person's name i think uh, reached to more people because it was named uh, with a local name uh, which ramdas swami uh, did so i think uh, shauri you have a very interesting incidents related to that how deep uh, in uh, local uh, people that species reached that somebody is working on scorpions and yes they are ecologically important whatever it is but that uh, yeah uh, naming scorpions with local names i think is there are uh, there are a few, yeah there are a few positive sides to it and there are a few uh, problems which are which come as a you know part and parcel with naming with some such things first thing is that because ramdas swami uh, name was involved uh, the scorpion news reached uh, every nook and corner of maharashtra probably all possible uh, local newspapers in mumbai pune as well as rural maharashtra covered this news and there was a lot of discussion that happened but at the same time the problem was that uh, even the locals were aware even shivthargarh area around varangaghat and shivthargarh everybody in the locality was aware that there is a new species and it's found in varandaghat which is a very interesting thing so the purpose is solved but at the same time we had a lot of problem because there were a lot of uh, local uh, there were not locals there were a lot of people who are strong believers of ramdas swami ji one of our uh, members mr makran ketkar ketkar is also a very strong believer but uh, because we have a very poor level of education probably in this country still people are not easily able to understand what is a patronym what is honoring a person with a species name uh, 
a uh, lot of people who are uh, ardent followers of ramdas swami ji they thought that it is insult of ramdas swami ji because you are naming a scorpion in uh, his name who is such a uh, you know huge personality and who right. is much beyond a person he, he is more than a person to people in uh, the state especially and uh, rightly because of his tremendous work uh, reforms that uh, we are uh, enjoying today but at the same time his own preachings and his own teachings will never ridicule a animal because it is so small but this incongruence in understanding is largely there in people eventually we realize that we are scientists and we are not reformers so we don't want to get into any controversies which will jeopardize our work for future so that's why it was a learning for us but it was a very interesting uh, way we dealt with this problem there were also a few uh, institutions which forced us to change the name and uh, there is a there is a body internationally uh, which uh, you know registers names which has codes for naming species which is called as iczn so iczn uh, we we also approached uh, the editor of the journal and iczn for a change of name but iczn said that for such uh requirements we don't have a provision of changing any name if there has to be it has to be an amendment and an amendment has to be you know put into the international court of justice where there will be a hearing which will go on to uh, change the rules or change the code right right yeah so i, I think i think it's it's always interesting to uh, give names uh, work on scorpions as you discuss and this journey this ad, i i would purposely called it adventure because it's it's not a journey that you just go and uh, have a look at scorpions it's very difficult it's challenging it's adventurous to find them it's not just adventurous to find them in field but after you get them into the lab it's still a huge amount of work just working on their structure and their dna and it's it's really still challenging and when we are working in india so many times you are working with limited resources so it so keeps on challenging but you two are working with uh, scorpions for more than 2 3 years now you have involved me thank you so much for uh, letting me part of that uh, research and uh, i think we'll be having many more such uh, research papers and we'll be increasing sure. the number of issues yeah. of scorpion india yeah. so thank you both of you for joining in today and uh, taking us through this uh, very adventurous journey of scorpions and best of luck to both of you and hope we thank you find much thank scorpions. you thank you so, uh, thank you for giving this opportunity basically yeah yes, to you. talk about our research work so yeah. this recording will be available on uh, my instagram profile i have a facebook profile with the same name wildlife weekly with nikhil and if you are not on both i have a youtube channel also with the same name so in all three places you will be able to watch this video after tomorrow yeah so uh, stay tuned yes. and i'll be back with some more interesting live sessions with all of you so yes. thank you thank you thank, thank you very much thank, thank you. you thank you bye bye